What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, and you're watching DaVinci Reacts. Um, I'm about to get into another oversimplified video. This is Emu Wars. I always get confused when I say Emu. I always think Emo. And I don't know why that happens. It's just like a slip of the tongue. Like, I always think Emo for some reason. But, um, yeah, Australia. Let's talk about it. A continent that is probably one of the most roughest, dangerous places on Earth. Uh, England thought they were doing something smart by sending their prisoners there, but little did you know that the bastards are tough. <laughs> they went down there and they survived. They took all that shit that was going around roaming the countryside, re wrecking havoc and put them bitches on barbecues and just started cooking them up and now all of a sudden they got a bunch of superhumans down there. So, um, yeah, superhumans in Australia fighting against super predators. Uh, you could pro- oh, well. I was about to say you probably couldn't pay me to go to Australia, but there are certain parts of Australia that are okay. It's just stay away from the middle. The middle is like uh, the danger zone or some shit. But either way, let's go ahead and jump into this, see what it has to offer. This is the Emu War. A lot of people have been telling me to check this out. Um, I don't know a lot about it. Just based on the name, I'm pretty sure it has something to do with like pest control. <laughs> that's all I can really think of. Like you can't literally have a war against Emu, of course. So that's the only other logical explanation. But let's go ahead and check this out and see what's going on. This is Australia. For the man who imagines being strangled by a tarantula while a kangaroo breaks his kneecaps and thinks, mmm, yes please. <laughs> For the man who pictures himself being eaten by a snake in the burning outback while eating a Vegemite sandwich and thinks, mmm, yes please. And that man was Governor Arthur Phillip. Oh, I'm gonna stop real quick. Vegemite. Now I wanted to ask you guys about this. Now if there's any Australian viewers out there, please explain. Or if anybody that eats Vegemite, please explain to me. What is the purpose of it? Is it like... Is it kind of like cast oil back in the day where you took it because you thought it had like health properties and or is it an actual snack that you enjoy because based on what all the reviews I've heard Vegemite isn't good thanks mmm yes please and that man was governor Arthur Phillip who landed in Eastern Australia in 1788 presumably saw a dingo being eaten by a crocodile being eaten by a death adder being eaten by a koala being eaten by Mel Gibson and thought to himself yes <laughs> Good. Now I know what you're thinking, but oversimplified, the British didn't discover Australia, the Vikings did. And you'd be wrong. I'm not sure why you'd think that. Vikings hey, discover if everything, Vikings God so damn much, it. Then why don't you check out today's sponsor? <laughs> Vikings War of Clans was inspired by the PC strategy and RPG games of the 90s we all loved, like Age of Empires and Civilization. If you, like me, want to relive those memories again with a new experience, don't give me hope. Don't do that. I've been dying for an Age of Empires game for the longest. I know they have a fourth one coming out, but um, yeah, I've been dying for a game like that, but something that expands all the ages, not just a specific group. Because Age of Empires always has like a, a small period that each game takes place in. Like the first game was like Stone Age to like the Bronze Age. Then the second game was like the Iron Age to the whatever mid medieval and then the third game was like renaissance and up to like industrial or something i want something that covers everything kind of like rise of a uh, something like rise of nations or a uh, empire earth i would get into this game but it looks like it's one of those time based things you know where you have to have like gems to do shit and you have and everything's on a timer you have to wait for stuff to be built nah not my not my thing then this mobile game is for you. Vikings lets you choose your own playstyle, and what makes its world so addictive is that more than 20 million online players are constantly changing the way it evolves by never-ending fighting over resources, yeah, forging it's free to play, so and competing in you know live events. What type of Support game it's my channel be. by downloading Vikings for free only from my links in the description box below, and get the special bonus of 200 gold coins and a protective shield. Meanwhile, in New York. Buy, buy. Man, this is great. The market will continue to grow forever. But what if it doesn't? Oh, crap. I never thought of that. Sell, sell. And the stock market crashed, which led to economic downturn. <laughs> oh, I started with a question. Didn't anyone any money, which led to more economic downturn, which meant everyone stopped buying stuff, which led to more economic well, downturn. Damn. And hey, what if all the crops in the Great Plains were destroyed in a drought and then a big dust storm engulfed the area? That's right, more economic downturn. And in an effort to combat the crisis, America began imposing tariffs on foreign imports, which made the economic downturn go global, and the earth got really depressed. But one nation that was hit harder than most by the whole affair, Australia. The problem for Australia yeah, was that it relied heavily on its export industries, and in the current economic climate, 
no one was buying. To make things worse, Australia had introduced its own currency and pegged it onto the gold standard via the British pound. But then the UK started messing with its own peg on the gold standard. And if this is starting to sound confusing, then let me oversimplify it for you. Hey UK, looks like my car is broken down. Want to give me a tow? No problem, friend. I got you. <laughs> More economic downturn. The point I'm trying to make is things economic weren't good, downturn. and in particular, it was Australia's farmers that were suffering most. After the First World War, Australia had given returning veterans land for farming, but with the current economic crisis, the farmers just weren't making enough money, and many left to go find work in the cities. But for those who remained, things were about to get even worse. That's crazy. Look at that. All those people that was in the... Well, I know it's a simplified video, but all those people that were in the uh, center of the country and, like, to this day, the, the center of Australia isn't really settled, right? Like, if there are cities, they're probably, like, Wild West cities or something. I mean, obviously, this could be solved with a quick Google search, so just have faith with me. I will, I will learn, but I've always come to the understanding that the center of Australia is, was, like, uninhabitable. Well, it's habitable, but... Dangerous as hell. <laughs> Before we get into that, it's time for some cultural exchange. My national bird is the bald eagle. It's a strong patriotic symbol of America and a deeply valued and protected species. My national bird is the peafowl. It's a beautiful creature whose vivid colors represent India. So we list it as a protected species. My national bird is the emu and it's a pest. <laughs> also bloody delicious. Emus, six feet tall, 90 to 120 pounds, and able to run at speeds up to 40 miles per hour, usually return to the coast after their breeding season. But suddenly they found Western Australia full of lush, wet farmland. I know I'm about to say something that's extremely dated and I'm gonna continue to play it. But when they were uh, testing the emu for its um, like physical capabilities, did anybody else that's a long time user of the internet remember a site called stick death it uh there was a, a segment on stick death called the beast and like they had a segment where the the beast was like doing like these uh they were these field tests like to see how strong it was like it was this creature that just went around and just killed people and like they finally caught it and they tested to see just how strong it was and it was like superhuman and could run extremely fast like that's what for some reason when i thought of when i saw that like i don't know why that popped in my head that was like 25 years ago. <laughs> oh yeah. my, look at all this delicious wheat that just so happens to be growing here in large quantities. Hey guys, get a load of this. Mm. You know oh my, look at all this delicious wheat. Hey, who left this big hole in the fence? Guys, get a load of this. Oh, wow. Oh, really? 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 What a lovely morning for some farming. What? Those damned emus, they have it in for me. They're bullies. They're nothing but bullies. Calm down, Bruce. They're just animals. It's not personal. Hey, Farmer Bruce, where did you find that hat? The toilet? <laughs> yes. 20,000 emus cost the Australia already has farmers toilets millions that give hats. more pounds in lost crops and damages. The situation couldn't continue like this. Something had to be done. So in 1932, the farmers turned to the government for help. You'd think they'd go to the Minister of Agriculture, but these farmers said no. This is a job for the military. So they went to George Pierce, the Minister of Defense. That's right. Australia was to go to war with the emus. But not everyone was happy with the idea. This is barbaric. We can't go slaughtering thousands of our own national bird. Oh, come on, guys. The machine guns will make it quick and painless. Machine guns? You're using machine guns? This is animal cruelty. Look, I know it's unusual, but it's not like we're poachers turning the birds into feather hats. Think of the benefits. It'll be good target practice for our boys. The government can show it took action. Plus, I can get myself a nice new feather hat. Uh, did I say feather hat? I meant I want to gather chat with you about getting you all some nice new feather hats. Uh, did I say feather hats? I meant I want to wage terror at these emus and turn them all into feather hats. Damn it. Of course, Pierce first made the Just farmers stop. sign an Just agreement stop, saying that they would pay for the whole thing and that Pierce wouldn't take any of the blame if the operation that was clearly very stupid turned out to indeed 
be stupid. And the operation went ahead. Major GPW Meredith and his men were sent with two Lewis machine guns to hunt down and take out the evil emu population in Western Australia. Target spotted. Well, was it an emu? No, sir. It's an emo. Damn it, Jones. Learn your vowels. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, it looks like the humans are coming for us. But check this out. I've come up with an amazing plan. See if you can follow me here, okay? When they approach, we run away. <laughs> sir? You're a genius. Pierce sent a camera crew along with the machine gunners to capture some good old propaganda for the government. And the first battle took place in November at Campion. Now, if there is footage of this actually happening, then that means that somewhere on YouTube, there's an archive of videos of people shooting emus. So, or is it emu? Either way, there should be footage somewhere, so I might have to go check that out. Gunners ...to capture some good old propaganda for the government, and the first battle took place in November at Campion. The men spotted a mob of emus from a distance, so they set up their guns and opened fire. The emus split up into smaller groups and ran in every direction. The men were only able to kill what they called a number of birds, but the vast majority got away. Cut! <laughs> Surprisingly, many of the emus were able to take multiple bullets, but still run at full speed to safety causing Meredith to compare them to tanks, saying if we had a military division with the bullet carrying capacity of these birds, it would face any army in the world. Okay, we need to get closer. No, you idiots, not to me, to the emus. Oh, sorry, no, no. I like it. <laughs> so next, they tried sneaking up on a large number of emus near a local dam and firing at short range. Maybe the men were just unlucky, but my professional opinion says the emus were magic because both guns jammed after just 12 emus were killed and once again, the rest got away. Cut! Mm. The men were feeling a little humiliated after losing to a pack of discount ostriches, so they decided to move further south discount the emus were said to be tamer. Shots and this fired. time, they had a new strategy. Okay, Jones, here's the plan. You mount the machine gun in the back, I'll chase the emus, you shoot. Got it? Got it. <laughs> uh. I'm gonna shove that camera up your- The operation was a fiasco, and the press had a field day. In Parliament, Pierce was lambasted, mm. and an opposition party member suggested that medals should though. be handed out to the emus, who had won every round so far. Pierce, feeling quite humiliated, called the operation off, but four days later the farmers approached again and said, Hey man, the emus are still eating all our crops, can you send the army back out here? And Pierce was like, Yeah, okay. So the operation was back on for round two, and this time Meredith and his men had learned the emus' guerrilla tactics, and were much more successful, with reports suggesting the men were cutting down 300 emus every week. I hope you boys are getting great footage of this. What on earth are you filming? Despite the success, the media had lost interest in the whole thing. But with a thousand emus killed, Pierce finally ended the operation and returned to Parliament declaring victory for the humans. So there were 20,000 emus out there <laughs> destroying crops, the and you've killed a thousand. Mm-hmm. Meaning there's still 19,000 emus out there. Yep. And in addition, you've burned through 10,000 rounds of ammunition. Uh-huh. Meaning you wasted 10 rounds per confirmed kill. That's right. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and call this one for the emus. Mm -hmm. At least I got a feather hat. What? What? So in the end, <laughs> the emus won the Great Emu War of 1932, and the emus continued to wreak havoc on the farmers for years to come. I'm scared the government this. introduced worry, a bounty dear. system, which saw some success. But for a moment, let's take some time to remember the brave men who said goodbye to their families and risked their lives to take on the great, evil, emu population in Western Australia. But even more importantly, let's think of the friends they made, the bond they created, and the memories they shared. Take me home <laughs> to golden fields and sights oh. of days gone by. It's where the heart lies with stories on. Hey. Uh, guys, I solved the emu crisis. Really? How? I just made some better fences. <laughs> right on, fence man. Right on. Oh, that's actually the end. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, I guess that is one way to fix the problem. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, 
I have a feeling they would be a lot more successful. One second. I have a feeling they'd be a lot more successful if they actually use like rifles because machine guns, especially in that time, I mean they, I mean they had a high fire rate, but I don't think they really had a lot of stopping power. What they needed was something. I mean, of course, you would kill less emus that way, but you would also save a lot more ammo. I think they probably would have been better with uh, rifles. But then again, if that did succeed, then there wouldn't be no emus nowadays. So. I guess fences were the solution. Um, yeah, like I said, I would like to have more people from Australia comment, um, uh, leave feedback on, you know, just like stories. <laughs> uh, if I have said anything that was rather ignorant or misinformed, please let me know in the comment section. Uh, because, like I said, I don't know a lot about Australia as far as like its history. Only thing I know is what the general population knows which is like it was supposedly a prison colony for um, Great Britain and you know they developed became superhuman and just started wreaking havoc and stuff if it, when it comes to survi survivalists I don't think there's anyone that's better than emus uh, wow well I guess emus too but I, was about to, I meant to say Australians <laughs> well emus are Australians also so whatever um, let's go ahead and take a moment to uh, remember all the dead emus and uh, soldiers that might have died on accident during that war <laughs> um, you know it would be funny if they made a video dedicated to the emu war and you know like back in the day they had like the civil war diary chronicles where somebody would just like have like somebody's diary just be reading it like Melissa it's been 17 hours since we last set in bark for the river of blase blase blah like i want to see something like that with emus but like bark 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 i don't know the sound emus make but either way that's been this video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did make sure you hit that like button subscribe and share uh, i look forward to seeing you guys in a future video but until then i'm devon da vinci and i'm signing out so this is